everybody, welcome back. We are in the last video of this grappling hook mechanic series made inside of Construct 3. In this video, we are going to be adding sound effects. First off, I'm going to go over here to our OBJ folder. I'm going to close that up. I'm going to slide our particle spark into that OBJ folder. So since we are adding sound effects, we're going to need to tell Construct 3 that we want to add sound. So if we go to our object types folder, right click and add a new object type. Scroll down towards the bottom in our media category, we have audio. Let's insert that. And I'm gonna slide that into our input folder. So we should have our audio keyboard and touch objects in that folder. Now we can import our sounds. So down here we have sounds and music. They are different. Files in the sounds folder will load with the game and then music streams from outside the game. And this helps with load time, especially if you have a large project. But we have sound effects, they're pretty small files. So I'm going to right click on sounds and I'm going to import sounds. Now if you have your sound effects open in a window, you can drag and drop them directly in here. Or you can come up here to import audio. I am going to choose import audio. In the assets I provide, there should be an audio folder. Inside that audio folder we have, I believe it is eight sound effects. Grapple connect, fail, launch, retract, grunt one, two, three, and landing. So I'm going to highlight all eight and open those. They loaded pretty quick. They're very small file sizes. Once they're all loaded, we can import. And there they are. We have all eight sound effects in our sounds folder. So now we can put them in the game. So the first one I'm going to do is when our player jumps, I'm going to give them a grunting sound effect. If you followed along with the castle run tutorial on this channel, you will recognize this. We're going to set it up the same way we did in that one. We're going to use a function to randomize which grunt sound effect is played when the player jumps. Gives it a little variation. Head over to our functions tab, right click and add function. And I'm going to call this jump grunt. And then I'm gonna right click on the function and add parameter. And this is going to be called grunt. And it is a number. This basically adds a local variable that can only be accessed through this function. So now I'm gonna set up the code to play each one of these grunt sound effects. And we're gonna do it through a sub event of our function. So highlight the entire block and press B on the keyboard. That'll give you a blank sub event. Then we can double click on that, go into system, and we want to compare a variable and that variable is going to be grunt, the one we just created. And when it is equal to zero, now I'm going to highlight that entire event, that sub event, and control C to copy, control V to paste, and control V to paste one more time. So we should have three. On the second one, I'm going to double click, go in, change the zero to a one. And the last one, I'm going to change the zero to a two. Zero is counted as a number as well, so we have zero, one, and two. So on grunt zero, I'm going to add an action, go into our input, grab our audio, play, and I want to play grunt one. We'll leave the volume at zero. Go down to grunt number one, add an action, input, audio, play, and we'll get grunt number two. And then on our last one, add an action, input audio play grunt three i'll hit done so now each one of our grunt numbers plays a different grunt sound back in our event sheet let's go into our player controls and i want to put this in with our player jump i don't know how this got past me but what we have going on here is checking while the w key is down to jump and we don't want that. Up here we have a triggered event. Triggered events are referenced by these green arrows. That means it happens one time each time this is carried out. So when we press the A or the D, we set the player object to mirrored and not mirrored. But while A or D is held down, 
we simulate control. This happens for as long as this is being held down. This needs to be a triggered event. Double click into this and we can hit the back button and instead of key is down, let's change that to on key pressed. That will help us out with playing the sound as well. We can call our function. When the W key is pressed, we jump. We want to play a grunt. So add an action, go into our functions, and call jump grunt. Now I want this to choose a random grunt, grunt one, two, or three, each time the player jumps. So we're going to use an expression called choose, and then we put some values in between parentheses. And those values are going to be 0, comma, 1, comma, 2, end parentheses. These are the 0, 1, and 2 that we set up with the variable inside our function. So it's going to choose one of those three each time the W key is pressed. So after we jump, we land, and we have a landing effect. I am going to actually put this right below our player jump code. So I'm going to just right click in this blank area right here, and I'm going to say add, and then insert below. Now I want to check to see when our player is on the ground. So we can go grab our player and scroll down to the platform behavior, and we have a check right there to see if they're on the floor. Before we go any further, I'm going to separate this with a comment. So I'm just going to highlight one of these, copy it, drag it down, and I'm going to go in and change landing on floor. Makes it easier to find. So when the player lands on the floor, I'm going to add an action, go to our input, audio, play, and grab our landing sound effect, and I'll leave that at volume zero. We have a problem. I'm not even going to test this out because this is saying while the player is on the floor to play this sound effect. So what's going to happen is it's just going to keep playing over and over again while this is true. So just the same way we did with our W key, we need to make this a triggered event. But we don't have a triggered event available for the platform is on floor but we do have a way to make it a triggered event. So in the area below this event, double click on it, and we can go into system and type in trigger once while true. All right, I'm going to test this out. I know of one more thing we need to fix, but we'll test what we have now. So we have a, our jump grunt. So you can hear the variation in the jumps, or the grunts, and when he lands, we have our landing sound effect. Now a problem that we will have, I'll see if I can get it to do it here. So you can hear every time he makes contact with the floor collision, we're getting that sound effect. And it's when we're swinging through the air. So we have something we can check for to prevent that. And that is going to be this variable that we created that lets us know that our player is on the vine. So when our player is not on the vine, then we want to be able to play this sound effect. So let's click over in this area, double click, and then we can go grab our player. And we're adding another condition to this event. We want to scroll down to compare instance variable, and we want to know when on vine is false and that's zero. So now, when we're touching the floor and we're not on the vine, then we can play. We'll go ahead and test that out real quick. And it's not playing anymore. But if I jump off, it plays. All right. Okay, I'm going to close up player controls and open up grappling launch. I have a sound effect over here called grapple launch. So when we launch that target, I want the launching effect to play. So let's add an action to this top block in our grappling launch group. And we're going to go to our input, audio, play. And we're going to select grapple launch, not looping. This one, I'll play it. This actually comes in pretty loud in comparison to some of the others. So I played around with the volume. I'm going to go with negative six. And we're going to need to set up some tags because we're going to need to reference 
this sound effect in another event. So in between quotation marks, we can create a tag. I'm just going to call this launch. And whatever you choose to type in here, one, make sure it's in between quotation marks, and two, make sure you remember how it's spelled because we have to get it exactly like it is when we reference it. Okay, so let's hit done. And I'm going to move this all the way to the very top of that block. So that takes care of launching it. So we're not going to need that. Let's go down to collisions. When we make contact with the floor, we have another sound effect we can play. It is grapple fail. But we're also going to need to stop our grapple launch because that grapple launch, as you heard earlier, is kind of a long sound effect. So if we make contact before the sound effect is done playing, all these sound effects are going to be playing on top of each other. So we need to first stop the launch sound effect and then play the grapple fail sound effect. And up here, we have on collision with the floor or traveling more than 500 pixels. If it travels more than 500 pixels, it can keep playing. The, the launch sound effect can keep playing and it'll just play out. We're going to make a new event with this. So if we right click in this area and we say add and insert above select our grappling target and we're going to say on collision with another object and that object is going to be the floor we can add an action let's go to our input grab our audio and I want to stop and it gives us the opportunity to put in a tag and we're going to reference what we want to stop and that is the one we just created which was launch. Make sure it is spelled exactly the same as you did on the other one and that it is in between quotation marks and now we can add another action go to input audio play and play our grapple fail. Now this one it comes in pretty loud and I went with a negative eight. I'm gonna test that out. There's our launch. And then you see it cuts that launch off and then plays that fail. And that is when it travels more than 500 pixels. Okay, the next one is going to be when our target connects. We have another one over here, grapple connect. In this top block of our on collision with the target collision, I'm going to add an action. We need to stop that launch sound and play our connect sound. So go to input, audio, stop. And in between the quotation marks, we're going to put in that launch tag. And then we can add an action input go to audio play and we want grapple connect and i'm going to leave that one at zero and play that there we go all right the next one i'm going to close that up we can go down to grapple retract because I have another one called Grapple Retract. And for this one, I'm going to create another sub-event of this block of code. So I'm going to right-click in this area of our top block here, and I'm going to add a blank sub-event, and I'm going to move that sub-event above our other sub-event, and we can add an action, input, audio, play, and this is going to be our retract. This one comes in pretty loud. I am going to give it minus 12. And we're going to need to reference this one as well. So let's add a tag in between quotation marks. I'm going to call this one retract. I want this to only be fired one time. In the event area, let's double click, go to system, and type in trigger once while true. So this is our grapple retract. That means that we have made contact. Our vine is retracting. If we dismount before it finishes playing the sound effect, we want to make sure that we stop that sound effect from playing. So let's add an action, go into our input, audio, and stop. And we want to stop 
that tag, which was retract. Make sure it is spelled the same as you spelled it before and is in between quotation marks. And I'm going to move that all the way to the very top of this block. And that might be it. Let's try that out. There we go. We do need to add grapple fail to our break function. Okay, let's try to... As soon as I dismount, it stops that retract. Okay. Let's go into our functions and in our grapple break, add an action, go into input, select grapple fail, and that one's pretty loud. I think we had that one at minus eight last time. And I'm going to put that at the top of that function. And let's play that. And there is our bar. And that works perfectly. That is the project. That ends it for me. I am off to figure out what my next project is going to be. If you have any suggestions or requests, feel free to drop those in the comments. Also, if you enjoy these tutorials, help me out by hitting that subscribe button. A couple of thumbs up here and there lets me know that I'm doing something you like and I will continue on doing it. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next tutorial series. Thanks for watching.